Hello there, and welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 59, entitled Azure Service Lifecycle. My name is Tim Warner. Our AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Skill today starts with the functional group Describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements and Life Cycles, goes through the objective Describe Service Life Cycle in Azure, and our specific skills, again, I've rolled up a couple because they're so closely related, are Describe Public and Private Preview Features, and Describe the Term General Availability, or GA. Go to timw.info forward slash AZ900SG for the interactive study guide. Let's begin. At Microsoft, each Azure product is managed by a particular engineering team, a group of programmers, product managers, program managers, et cetera, et cetera. And when a new product or a feature in a product is being worked on, originally it's private and proprietary. But eventually, when the feature reaches a certain level of maturity, Microsoft wants to solicit feedback from their customers. The first preview level is private preview, and this is where the feature or service is available to only specific Azure customers. Normally, either Microsoft will approach your company and approach you, or maybe your Microsoft partner or your cloud solution provider might hook you up, or maybe sometimes you can opt into a private preview when you read a blog post, say, at the Azure blog, and the engineering team is mentioning that you can join a private preview. But the key there is that the preview needs to be applied to and or opted into. There's actually a preview version of the Azure portal that anybody can sign into. You're not going to be able to get to private preview features in there necessarily, but it's still worth your looking at. It's preview.portal.azure.com, and you can see a screenshot of it over on the right. It looks for the most part exactly like the generally available portal, but you might find some goodies in there with regard to pre-release Azure features. Why would you care about pre-release features? Well, you might be waiting on a new service or a new feature that you and your team really could benefit from. And it's a good thing to be able to use these products and features before they're generally available because your team can get skilled up on them. And just as importantly, Microsoft is eager to receive your feedback so you can have a very tangible effect effect on that product service features development on Microsoft side. You see, that's the idea. This is a symbiotic relationship, really. When a product gets further yet along in its development cycle, it'll reach public preview. And this is where the feature shows up in the public Azure portal available to all customers. Now, it's not necessarily all Azure customers in all regions. Normally, the Azure engineering teams gradually roll out public preview only to selected regions. It is a pre-release feature, so it may still contain bugs, so Microsoft wants to be careful in exposing it. But again, you as a customer are encouraged to use the product, but in a limited way. You'll find in the Azure portal, public preview features have the word preview in parentheses after it. Lastly, when a feature or product becomes generally available, or GA, that means that the product is available for use by the general public. I'm assuming that we're in the Azure commercial cloud. Remember from a previous lesson, and we talked about Azure Government and Azure China Cloud Services, there you're going to have much less visibility of public preview and private preview features. Instead, it's pretty much the feature GAs and the commercial cloud. And then after a period of time, that GA feature may or may not make it to a sovereign cloud. That's just the way it is due to the extra compliance that goes in with Azure Government, Azure Government DoD, and Azure China Cloud Services. But the important thing to remember for your exam is that GA features are generally the only ones that are part of Azure support agreements, and they also have an SLA or service level agreement guarantee. We're concerned here with Azure Service Lifecycle. So we have the supplemental terms of use for Microsoft Azure Previews. And I'm going to give you the link to this at the end of this lesson, so don't worry about it too much. But I always make my students aware and my customers and my small consulting practice that you really shouldn't be using public preview features in production. Yes, it's true that in the public Azure portal, for instance, here I'm looking in my Azure Active Directory tenant at a feature called Administrative Units. 
and Microsoft makes no bones about it, so to speak. You can see the word preview in parentheses on every single choice here. But nonetheless, you need to understand the implications of using a public preview feature. And unless Microsoft says otherwise to you, these terms of use apply, and they're pretty scary. In fact, as you can see, it's highlighted on my page here. Previews are provided as is with all faults and as available and are excluded from the service level agreements and warranties. Previews may not be covered by customer support. Really important to note that unless otherwise informed by Microsoft or the engineering team, your use of public preview features in your subscriptions is not going to be covered by Azure support or an SLA. Very important. Well, how do you know if a particular feature is going to be covered for production use while it's in public preview, because that does happen. The best one-stop shop I'm aware of is the Azure Updates page. And again, I'll give you a link to this in just a moment, so don't worry about looking in my address bar. It's basically azure.com forward slash updates. And if you're an old dog like me, you can subscribe to the Azure Updates via really simple syndication or RSS. But what we've got here is three status levels that you can filter the updates on. Now available Available, which is generally available, GA. Preview, which is for the most part public preview. And in development, which is where the product is either in private preview or just completely internal development. So for instance, we could look up Azure Migrate and let me do in preview. I'm choosing Azure Migrate here specifically because I found that their engineering team is pretty good about honoring production level use even while the solution may be in public preview. So let's look, and I didn't scan this in advance, so I'm looking at this for the first time right alongside you. This June 29th article talking about the Azure VMware solution. This is a representative update that comes from that particular engineering team at Microsoft. And this is a good place to go periodically to check out and see what the latest roadmap milestones are for that product. And as you can see here, there'll normally be a bit of verbiage talking about the preview status. Sometimes I've seen invitations to join private previews. And with Azure Migrate at various points, I've seen them say that we are giving production support even though the service is still in preview. When they mention preview with no other qualifier, you can reasonably assume they're talking public preview, all right? Learning resources, number one, that preview terms of use is worth your bookmarking. Go to timw.info forward slash PPP1. The Azure Updates, another very worthwhile page to bookmark, timw.info forward slash PPP2. And for a Microsoft Learn lesson on this subject, go to timw.info forward slash PPP3. Well, if you can believe it, the next episode is actually the last episode of this study guide. Now, of course, that's until Microsoft adds new content to the exam. But at least as of late July 2020, I'm looking to be done with this thing in the next episode, which is called Azure Feature Updates and Product Changes. Please follow my YouTube channel here if you're not doing so already. You can follow me at Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my Pluralsight courses are at timw.info forward slash ps. And my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks for everything. I'll see you in that last lesson.